this short webcast we're going to have a look at Windows deployment services which I've got set up on this server here and as you can see when I go into Windows deployment services under servers there's my server and it says it's not properly configured yet so we're just going to go to configure server and you can see it gives me a list of the requirements before I begin so it tells me what I have to do and then when I click next I put in the path to hold the installation files and configure DHCP and it tells me which of these checkboxes I need to select depending on my configuration so I'm going to go ahead and check both of these and because this machine responds to DHCP it now can direct the clients to, to come to this machine and now I need to tell Windows Deployment Services which machines to respond to and I've just said respond to everything. That's configured the service for me but it hasn't put on the images that my network clients will need to boot and install from. So I'm going to get those from uh, an installation disk. Uh, in the sources folder we find the WIM files that we contain the images. We're going to put this in a, in a folder called image group 1 and you can see there are two installation images and one boot image on this disk. So we've just speeded this process up a little bit and those image files have been copied to the server. With the images in place I can look at their properties and I might want to specify an unattend.xml file to control this image while it's installed. I'm not going to do that here. You can see there's a version tab at the top of the screen which just gets information from the image and I may want to tweak which users have got permissions to install this operating system. As you can see everybody in the domain gets permissions to do that by default. Now one of the useful things in the newer versions of Windows Deployment Services is we can create a multicast transmission. And the idea of multicast is we send packets that can be used by all the machines that are trying to install at the same time rather than a packet for each one. The autocast option here starts that when the first user starts to install. So that's my installation images. If you have a look at boot images, I can create what we call a capture image. Now, there are two kinds of boot images. One is to install into the setup process. The other is to install into the capture process. So what I'm just going to do here is speed up the process of creating that capture image. And then I'm going to add the image onto the server. So we'll have two boot images, one for capture, one for rollout. So I'm going to add that image and again we'll just speed this process up. I'm going to change the image name so that we can tell the difference between them and we'll just let that one install as well. Now once these are installed the thing to do is to switch over to a client machine and see what the user sees when they choose to install using WDS. To make it easy to record the screen, I'm using a virtual machine to do the installation, but the process would be exactly the same if I was installing on a physical machine. So we pixie boot and we press the F12 key to say we want a network service boot, and now I get a choice between those two images. So as you could see there, I chose the installation image and it just boots into setup. So I select my language, I need to authenticate myself with the domain to use that image as you saw in the permissions before and now I've got a choice between those two images so I'm going to choose the core image I'm going to install onto the first available disk and it's really as easy as that if I come back to the server I can check on the progress of that installation and you can see here we've got some information that identifies the client and we just speeded up the installation process because as you can see it takes 20 minutes or so to do the installation. At the end of this multicast install though the option to do the multicast again remains.
Back on the machine we're installing, all those files have been copied down, they've been expanded, and we just run through the final pieces of the Windows PE setup. At the end of that process, Windows comes around to its first boot, and you can see this happening here. Uh, obviously we've speeded this up just a little bit so that you don't have to watch the whole of the first boot but when the process reaches its end we'll get the normal prompt to log on for the first time so I'm going to log on to this machine and when I log on you'll see it comes up with the standard user interface of server core and at that point I can do whatever post installation steps are required but you can see how easy and straightforward it is to do an installation using Windows Deployment Services.